our presentation today. I'm Nick Lowell, uh, Director of Engineering here at Ontario Computer. And uh, I wanted to uh, introduce you to this conference. We are uh, hoping to uh, help you make some decisions about um, water level monitoring and how to select the right water, water level monitoring products for your application. Um, one of the key things we hope to do is try to demystify some of the uh, accuracy specifications that surround these loggers. These specifications are often uh, uh, a bit confusing and uh, sometimes misleading. Um, and we also want to uh, help you understand how to maximize the um, quality um, and the uh, accuracy of your water level logging um, when you're out in the field and try to give you some tips that will be helpful in, uh, in understanding how to get the best results. So I'm going to turn this over to Richard Kaiser, who's going to do the first half of our presentation, and then I'm going to pick up the second half, and I'll uh, let you have it from here, Richard. Thanks, Nick. Uh, we're going to uh, deal with the pressure-based water level logger only in our discussion, and we're going to consider uh, different aspects. First of all, we're going to look at comparing the specification, and in particular, what you should be looking for. Uh, secondly, we're going to go over vented versus non-vented pressure applications. And thirdly, uh, I'm going to discuss the materials aspect of the loggers. Then Nick will pick up software and communications, and then he'll finish out with uh, going over deployment tips and considerations. At the end, we'll have questions uh, for your review. First of all, uh, let's talk about specifications. Does the specified accuracy relate to the sensor or the entire logger? Oftentimes, when you review specification sheets, you'll often find that that the uh, spec the sheets will talk about the sensor accuracy instead of the whole logger accuracy. So it's important that you understand what you're reading and what you're evaluating. Of course, there are additional errors in uh, in addition to the sensor errors. In particular, there's case in sensor mounting errors, there's thermal errors, and there's logger circuitry errors. It's important to consider this whole pressure logger error when selecting your logger. In addition to that, it's also important to consider the whole measurement error, which not only includes the pressure logger, but also potentially a barometric logger, or in the case of the vent system, the vent system error, and fourth, uh, the manual measurement error that everything is referenced to. In the case of uh, the pressure logger error, one has to consider that case sensor mounting error as you know, a pressure sensor is a strain gauge that's measuring the strain of the sensor diaphragm acting over pressure. Mounting of the sensor must not induce additional strain to the diaphragm, especially over temperature and the pressure ranges. Uh, so one considers a more resilient mounting for this. However, uh, on the other hand, one has to be concerned about preventing a leak path around the sensor. So it's a difficult problem, but yet it, it can induce error in the uh, system. Secondly, the voltage reference circuit uh, can induce errors, in particular because the battery voltage goes over different ranges, in particular with temperature and with load. A ratiometric A to D converter can be a solution. Third, the A to D converter itself needs to be high quality. At least 12 bit or greater to give you some reasonable resolution over the large pressure ranges we're considering. And thirdly, our thermal considerations, which we'll talk about next. In addition to these pressure logger errors, we have the same set of errors for the barometric logger if you're doing an absolute system. And in the case of a vent system, there are oftentimes vent system errors caused by a pressure drop across the water absorbing material. When looking at the sensor itself, the sensor accuracy uh, is, is, is prime. And oftentimes, it's specified by a single typical point in the center of the pressure range. This isn't really sufficient, because obviously you may be using it over the full range. What you see there is, on this slide is a plot of how we typically test our units, and we test them over the full range of pressure in uh, a number of PSI steps, and we test both with increasing pressure and decreasing pressure. This allows us to measure the linearity of the sensor as well as its hysteresis, and we multiple cycle uh, at different temperatures to assess the repeatability of the sensor. It's important that one has a handle on all these aspects of the sensor. Especially for pressure transducers, there's temperature variations. Temperature changes affect all pressure-based sensors. 
and this is because they are strain gauges. And strain gauges are driven uh, very strongly by temperature. Also, there are temperature effects caused by the diaphragm connection to the sensor, its own sensor housing. And there's an interaction there as the temperature coefficients vary. Thirdly, there's the interaction between the sensor housing and the logger housing. As we discussed before, it needs to be a resilient mount, but it does have an effect on, on its output. Uh, we also talked about the bridge circuit measurement response over temperature. That circuitry will vary with temperature. So all these add up to a significant amount of error. There are three primary ways of dealing with this error. First of all, the temperature sensor manufacturer oftentimes laser trims positive temperature coefficient resistors in the bridge itself of the sensor. And this does the first order level of compensation for the sensor variation. Secondly, one can have compensation components in the bridge itself, in the bridge measurement circuitry, I should say. And thirdly, to cover all of the aspects of temperature variation, one can test the whole system over temperature, that is to do the whole pressure sweep that you saw on the prior slide, and uh, do it at numerous temperatures to generate what are called temperature compensation coefficients that have been used to, to compensate the output pressure and correct it. This compensation is done digitally. It can be done on board in the logger with its own kit, or uh, in the case, in our case, we chose to do that compensation on the PC-based application software. The plot you see there shows a typical uh, system where the temperature compensation is done with a component level only in the example, but full correction is done in that Hobo U20 example. And you can see how temperature compensation can be held. It's, it's quite accurate result. Next, uh, we'll talk about drift error. That's another primary issue with pressure-based systems. All pressure sensors drift over time. It's important to get a handle on how much you're going to have uh, when buying the sensor. First of all, the drift is usually specified by the manufacturer of the pressure transducer itself, and it's usually listed in terms of percent of full scale uh, per year. And it's important to know what that is, uh, especially during long-term deployments where you can't take regular reference measurements. However, the drift is quantifiable. That is, when you do your manual measurement at installation time, uh, when you collect the data, or data at some later point in time, if you do a second manual measurement, you can see the inaccuracy of the calculation from the logger versus what is actually measured. And call that primarily drift. It could be also possibly uh, due to suspension length error or movement of the device, but typically it's drift. And you can see in the plot on the right how it's uh, how the data can slowly shift with time. Another aspect you might consider is finding out from the manufacturer how the logger is tested prior in production and before it's shipped to you. Uh, some uh, manufacturers may test only one point to ascertain that it's just functioning properly. However, uh, we feel it's important that it be tested uh, over its full pressure range at numerous temperatures with mistraceable standards. Certainly one point can tell you whether it's working and correct for offset, two, two points can correct for offset and gain, but the multi-point test that we showed you on that earlier slide uh, where the pressures varied over the full range and that pressure cycle is repeated at numerous temperatures, uh, we need to ship it to you and give you the confidence that you, not, you might have. Many times a product is sold that isn't 